The movie begins with the sun rising over a small town called Madhupur in the Mathura district of India. We are then introduced to Krishnakant Misra, a kind-hearted fruit trader, pouring his heart into a journal entry about the swift passage of time, and the bittersweet moment when a daughter leaves her childhood home to embrace a new life as a bride. He writes that no matter what, a daughter will always remain her father's girl, just like his Poonam, who he has affectionately nicknamed Bido. He writes that Poonam is the only child of his late brother, and has been living with them since her parents passed away when she was just a little child. Growing up as inseparable companions with Krishnakant's own daughter, Chodi, their bond transcends mere siblinghood. But the problem is Rama, his wife, whose eyes cannot escape the fact that Poonam is prettier than Chodi. Jealousy gnaws at her, preventing her from embracing Poonam as her own, as if the young girl's beauty ignited an unwarranted rivalry. Poonam desperately keeps yearning for a mother's love in Rama, but her heart remains resolute, a void yet to be filled. Seeing Poonam sad and lonely, Krishnakant took her under his wing. All it took was one loving glance, to make her laugh. She is the one to bring him his shawl every time he goes out, and together, they harmonize in song, dance in joy, and share the tenderest of moments, like a melody that resonates through their souls. With a loving father-like figure in her life, Poonam grew up, and now it's time for her to get married. While Krishnak and S. Pen dances across the journal's pages, an unexpected arrival sends ripples of excitement through the air. Bagat Jai, his friend and jeweler. He hands them their jewelry order and says that giving away a daughter's hand in marriage is said to be the most sacred act. We are then introduced to Poonam, vision of grace, now a blossomed young woman. With reverence, she offers water and touches Bagat's feet for blessings, who recognizes her instantly, marveling at the transformation from the little girl he once knew. Krishnakant tells him that she is about to graduate in commerce, and is the one who handles all his accounts. Bagat Jai, captivated by her beauty, pays homage with kind words, yet a storm brews in the form of Rama's disapproval, and she calls Chodi downstairs. Poonam goes to fetch her and finds her dancing on the bed. She warns Chodi that if her mom finds out that she was dancing instead of studying, it will not be good for her. She then asks her to get dressed, because they have a guest downstairs. Chodi doesn't seem to like the fact that her mom pushes her to do so many things when guests arrive. As the sisters descend the stairs, their footsteps seem to echo the beats of their hearts. Rama's disapproval hangs in the air for not applying the face pack and getting ready on time. Yet Chodi's radiant smile stands as a defiant sunbeam. The girls take trays full of delights for Bagat, and he wishes them both a brighter tomorrow and soulful companions on their journey. Before both the men leave for the temple, Bagat tells Krishnakant that the reason he recognized Poonam is because tales of her ethereal beauty dance like a flame in their vibrant social circle. He then questions that there must be many marriage proposals for her. Krishnakant replies that for his Poonam, he is looking for a house where her values will be respected. After hearing the condition for Poonam's marriage, Bagat offers the proposal of a handsome young man from an excellent family, the son of Mr. Harishchandra, from the Harishchandra group of industries. Prem is the youngest son of Harishchandra, and a perfect match for their Poonam. Krishnakan is reserved about marrying his daughter into a wealthier family, but Bagat Jai has made up his mind. As the threads of fate intertwine, hearts sway in uncertainty, waiting to embrace the dawn of a decision that will shape Poonam's destiny forever. Amidst the aromatic embrace of the kitchen, a playful dance of secrets ensues as Chodi teases her with the enigmatic name of the elusive Delhi boy. Not understanding what she means, Poonam runs after her, but she doesn't let the information slip. They run into her father, he unveils a tale of destiny that Bagat Jai has carried Poonam's photograph to the distant lands of Delhi, igniting a spark of hope that her forever home lies in those far-off realms. A shy smile plays on her lips, but she doesn't utter a word. All the way across the country, at Harishchandra's house in Delhi, Mr. Harishchandra sits, a wise figure, guiding his grandchild Rahul through a maze of homework, when Bagat Jai arrives. Rahul's mom Bhavna serves them breakfast, and his dad Sunil joins them. Prem is absent from the table, as he has already left for his squash game. Harish Chandra is sad, because Bhavna and Rahul will go to her mom's place for summer vacation, and the house will feel empty without them. At this moment, Bagat suggests an idea to fill the void, that looms large in the absence of dear ones. His words dance like sunbeams as he encourages Harish Chandra to seek a second daughter-in-law, a new soul to grace their home, weaving love and laughter into its very essence. Amidst the fierce battle on the squash court, where determination and sweat intertwine, we meet the charismatic lead of our story, Prem Bajpayee. His glistening hair bears witness to the intensity of the match when an urgent message from his father interrupts the game. When he reaches the office, the receptionist, Aunt Maria, hugs him, saying that she is very happy for him. As he strides through the main hall, a symphony of admiration greets him, beaming faces, standing ovations, a celebration of his presence. The air crackles with excitement, and little does he know that destiny awaits within those four walls. He gets to his father's room, and Harishchandra tells Prem about Poonam's proposal. He says that if Prem agrees, they'll go meet the girl and her family on Sunday. Uncertainty clouds his mind, for marrying at this tender age seems daunting, but his father assures him that this is the perfect age to get married. 
She'll come into his life as inspiration, as a motivation to work harder, and will be his support through and through. He finally hands Prem her picture, and he clutches her photograph, feeling a smile form on his lips. As the sun sets on the horizon, casting a warm glow upon the walls of his home, Prem remains captivated by Poonam's photograph. Bhavna tells him about Poonam, how she is a pure, innocent girl, and that she likes her. The prospect of their first meeting looms ahead like a mystical encounter, where two souls will collide in a dance of destiny. What words will he choose? The answers remain elusive, and yet, the anticipation sets his heart adrift. On the long-awaited day, the cars come to a halt, and Poonam's heart races as she gazes from the balcony. They all are warmly received by Krishnakant and Rama. They sit down, have some snacks, talk about random things, while Prem's eyes search for the vision of beauty he has heard so much about. Meanwhile, Poonam adorns herself in a resplendent sari, feeling a mix of nerves and excitement. With Chodi by her side, she descends the stairs, her heart pounding like the beats of a celestial dance. He finally sees her, and the first thought that comes to his mind is that she is a goddess descended from the skies, because someone this beautiful can't be a human. Bhavna and Chodi escort them both to privacy of the roof, for some time alone. They both sit quietly, not knowing what to say, but then tentatively, Prem breaks the silence, revealing fragments of his life, his dreams, and the echoes of his first love. Poonam never asks him a question, not even about the girl who he liked. Finally, Chodi arrives and takes Poonam away with her. Prem is left with Bhavna, who asks if it is a yes, and a shy smile betrays his feelings, hinting at a decision that has stirred his heart. Bhavna's heart leaps with joy as she rushes downstairs to share the news of Prem's affirmative answer. The room fills with smiles and heartfelt congratulations, the air heavy with anticipation. Harish Chandra tells Krishnakan about their decision, and filled with joy and tears, Krishnakan rushes upstairs to seek the answer that will seal their fate. She says yes, and he embraces her with tearful eyes, knowing that this moment marks the beginning of a new chapter. The preparations for engagement begin right away, and everyone is so happy. Except Rama, who, driven by her insecurities and fears, calls Krishnakan aside to discuss a matter that strikes at the heart of their happiness, the delicate issue of dowry, because she will not let him squander everything they own on someone else's daughter. He scolds her for crossing her limits, but his outburst is controlled when Harish Chandra arrives. With words that resonate like soothing melodies, he reminds them that it is not gold or riches they seek, but the precious gift of Poonam, her laughter, her dreams, and her boundless love. The engagement ceremony finally begins, and the couple exchanges rings in the presence, and blessings of their loved ones. Before the guests leave, Krishnakan invites them to Sam Saravar, his hometown, to spend some quality time together. They all agree to meet at Sam Saravar next month. The enchanting prospect of spending quality time together weaves a tapestry of anticipation, binding their hearts with the thread of kinship. While they all are exchanging greetings, Chodi drags Poonam upstairs for a final meeting with her destined love, Prem. Time seems to slow as they stand face to face, their hearts entwined in a dance of emotions. In that fleeting moment, he captures her essence with a single photo, etching her image forever. As the hands of time unfurl, the long-awaited moment arrives, the time to visit Sam Saravar. A hidden gem nestled amidst majestic mountains, a haven of beauty far from the city's clamor. Krishnakan arrives with his family at the Krishnakant villa. Poonam's eyes shimmer like stars, her heart aflutter as she plays with her precious ring, a symbol of the love that awaits her. While she waits, Chodi teases her with Prem's name. They both redecorate the house, all the while singing and dancing. Amidst the joyous symphony of life, there lies Rama, her heart a canvas of worries, pondering the burden of household chores. But Krishnakant, a partner in every sense of the word, helps her with the chores. As they journey towards their destined meeting, Prem's heart races with anticipation, his fingers caressing the delicate necklace he bought for Poonam. In his mind's eye, he envisions the magical moment of gifting her the jewel, her radiant smile and bashful glances. When they get near the house, he takes out his binoculars and watches Poonam and Chodi playing on the roof. They finally reach their destination, and coincidentally both are wearing yellow, like the sun and its golden rays. As she serves them water, her watchful eyes catch Prem's sneeze, and she gently warns him against drinking ice water. His heart flutters with her care, and he can't help but smile, willingly dropping the ice to savor her warmth instead. At dinner time, the ladies serve food, and everyone compliments Poonam's cooking. But as the night draws near, a twist of fate takes center stage. Harish Chandra learns that Krishnakan's family plans to sleep in a nearby quarters to accommodate the guests. He doesn't like this, and with resolute determination, he declares that they shall all sleep together on the floor, united in the embrace of familial love. While they are preparing for the night, the lights go out. They light up lanterns, in this tender moment, Prem steps forward as a guiding light, lending his hand to Poonam, sharing the weight of the world with her. Before she leaves, he hands her the gift, a token of his affection that reflects the promise of their future. As the first rays of the sun grace the sky, painting it with hues of gold, the inhabitants of Krishnakant Villa awaken to the promise of a new day. 
They all go out for a morning walk and indulge in a delectable breakfast of milk and jail by, their laughter and chatter resonating like sweet melodies that echo through the air. Since Prem is eager to find some alone time with Poonam, he asks his brother for help. After getting the permission of the elders, the kids go out to see the lake, and finally the couple finds some time alone. As the winds begin to dance and raindrops fall like pearls from the sky, they find themselves drawn closer, their souls entwined in a tender embrace. The ensuing days become a treasure trove of joy and togetherness as they embark on adventures, playfully exploring life's wonders. The temples become the sanctuaries of their love, witnessing the blossoming of an affection that knows no bounds. In the timeless realm of Sam Saravar, their hearts find solace as love weaves its enchanting tapestry, intertwining their destinies with the promise of forever. Their holiday ends when Prem and his family have to leave for an emergency meeting in Delhi. The final day together arrives, and Bhavna, the nurturing soul, imparts wisdom to Poonam, revealing that the time between engagement and marriage will become a treasure trove of memories. Later at night, after dinner Prem goes up to the terrace and waits for her. Poonam, like a celestial muse, brings saffron milk and a warm blanket, enveloping Prem in her tender care. His heart skips a beat as he beholds her adorned with the necklace he gifted her, a vision of beauty that steals his breath away. His fingers intertwine with hers, and he plants a gentle kiss on her delicate hand, a silent promise of love that transcends words. With each passing second, their bond evolves into a force stronger than they could have ever imagined, love blossoming like a rare flower amidst the moonlit night. The night turns into day, the moment of parting arrives like a bittersweet melody. Before going their separate ways, he counts the days, only four months, two weeks, and two days until they unite in matrimony. In this precious time apart, he vows to pen heartfelt letters, eagerly waiting for her replies to fill the void. Amidst the tender farewell, Poonam's eyes shimmer with tears, and she bid him goodbye. Back in Delhi, Prem joins his dad's office. His only motto is to concentrate on work, but a few minutes in, like a mischievous breeze, the thought of his future wife dances into his consciousness, captivating his heart and leading him astray. In the quaint town of Majipur, the air brims with excitement as preparations for the beloved Bido's wedding are in full swing. While they are deciding on silver coins to give the wedding guests, Rama taunts that he should give away everything they own, forgetting that they have a daughter of their own. Poonam's heart aches as she overhears the conversation, and the bitter truth that her uncle has pawned off their cherished Sam Saravar house adds to her distress, cascading tears that mirror her inner turmoil. He finds her crying, and asks about the reason for her emotional outburst. She cannot bear the thought of marrying, knowing that it led to the mortgage of their beloved home. But his uncle promises her that Chodi's wedding will be as amazing as hers, and she need not worry. As he places Prem's heartfelt letter in her hands, her heart skips a beat, realizing that even miles apart, a soul aches for hers, weaving dreams of a love that defies the boundaries of time and distance. In the whirlwind of life's demands, a phone call becomes the thread that connects their souls across the oceans. Prem calls her to inform her that he is going to Tokyo for a meeting. Another day he calls her again, to tell her that today, he accidentally called his colleague Poonam in front of everyone. A playful mix-up elicits laughter, but in a moment of vulnerability, his anger flares, and the line goes silent. Another day passes, and the roles reverse, and it is Poonam who takes the initiative to call. He says that he is afraid that he will fail everyone, but amidst the shadows of doubt, she becomes his guiding light, promising him a future of triumphs rather than failures. In a poignant twist, he warns her of an impending silence, one month without their cherished conversations. But her smile remains unwavering as she declares her love. After the phone call, she goes to a temple and prays for his well-being, her heart intertwining with the divine, seeking blessings that will shield him from the storm. Krishnekan arrives from Agra and excitedly shares the news with Rama, telling her about the musicians and confectioners he has arranged for the celebration, but her expressions don't portray any happiness. She later calls Poonam into her room, her voice tinged with an unusual gravity, and advises her to start maintaining distance from her uncle, as he will miss her too much when she leaves their home. The shadow of sadness that passes over Poonam's face echoes the tender ache of her heart, but she bows to Rama's wishes, obliging to maintain the emotional distance. The distancing begins when she asks Chodi to get Krishnak in his shawl, a subtle but significant step in the journey towards separation. Days pass like a gentle breeze, until one day Suno calls and informs them that Prem's journey to Japan was an immense success. He did what others couldn't, and is returning earlier than expected. He then requests Poonam to be with them when they receive Prem at the airport tomorrow. The next morning, a car arrives to whisk Poonam away to the airport. On the other hand, on his flight back home, her ethereal presence seems to radiate from every woman he glimpses, her image etched on his heart like an indelible mark of love. Finally, the plane touches down, and Prem gets off it. He is shocked and falls down when he sees Poonam among all the people. But before he gets up, Bhavna takes Poonam away, making him think that he was just imagining her. As he steps out of the airport and enters the waiting car, 
He can scarcely believe his eyes. There she is, sitting right beside him, Poonam, the embodiment of his dreams. He touches her shoulder, almost afraid that she might vanish like a mirage. And when she doesn't vanish, he squeals in excitement. They reach home, and there is a function going on celebrating Prem's success, and also because Poonam is coming to their place for the first time. Amidst laughter and merriment, the house pulsates with the joy of their love, as friends and family unite to revel in their happiness. After the festivities end, Prem takes her on a house tour. In his room, she discovers a treasure trove of framed pictures, her family members smiling back at her from the side table. The sight evokes a tender wave of emotions, and tears of love cascade down her cheeks, her heart touched by the thoughtfulness of her beloved. To make her laugh, Prem vows to cherish their bond, promising to spend one month every year in Madhipur, regardless of the world's opinions. But their moment of bliss is interrupted as Bhavna, like a gentle breeze, arrives to take her away. As they bid each other farewell, the flame of their love burns brighter, knowing that they are destined to be one. Back home at Madhupur, Chodi watches the video of the last day event. Watching Krishnakant sing for Poonam ignites an unsettling fire within Rama, fueling a simmering anger that threatens to consume her. She goes to her room, where Krishnakant broaches the topic of gifting half of Poonam's late mother's jewelry to her, a sentimental gesture to honor her memory, and bestow blessings upon their daughter. But Rama's heart remains close to such sentiments, dismissing the idea with disdain, declaring that there's no need for old jewelry when they can save it for Chodi. As emotions reach their peak, a heated exchange ensues. Krishnakant stands firm, asserting that the jewelry rightfully belongs to Poonam. But Rama, blinded by her anger, issues a heart-wrenching ultimatum. If he doesn't comply with her wishes, she will boycott the wedding altogether. As Rama barges out of the room, her anger unknowingly collides with Poonam, who stands unsuspecting in her path. Not knowing that her aunt is angry, she says that she is coming to show them the gifts which came from Delhi. Rama snaps and says that she knows her in-laws are filthy rich, she doesn't need to show it off. Harsh words are exchanged, and Rama's jealousy unveils itself, a painful reminder of the divide that separates them. As the long-awaited wedding days arrive, their house is adorned like a bride's. Two days before the big day, Bhagat Jai arrives from Delhi, bearing gifts and Poonam's exquisite wedding dress. In a poignant moment, Poonam approaches Rama, her heart heavy with emotions, and tenders her cupboard keys, a symbolic gesture of trust and respect. However, her gesture is met with a cold silence, as Rama remains unmoved by the olive branch extended in love. After handing her the keys, Poonam starts to leave, but before stepping from the threshold, she seeks forgiveness for any unintended hurt her actions may have caused. One day before the wedding, the rituals begin with a sacred puja at the temple. People question Rama's absence from the scene, so Krishnakant goes back home to fetch her. He finds her in the room sitting alone, so he says firmly that even though she didn't partake in any of the rituals, tomorrow Poonam will leave their home forever, and he wants her to send Poonam away with blessings. However, her silence remains unyielding, leaving Krishnakant grappling with the pain of unspoken emotions. In a heart-wrenching decision, he leaves her to attend the temple ceremony, the burden of longing and hope weighing upon him. Under the moonlit sky, Poonam is standing on the balcony of her room when Rama arrives and gives her blessings to her. But when she leans in to hug her, the illusion dissipates like a wisp of smoke, leaving Poonam grasping at the air, her arms embracing emptiness. She lies face down on the bed and cries at the loss of something she never truly had. Outside their house, in the small street of Madhupur, the night sky blooms with colorful fireworks, setting the stage for unforeseen tragedy. One of the firecrackers accidentally gets into the house through an open window, igniting a curtain that quickly becomes a raging inferno. Panic ensues, and in their desperate attempt to escape, the fire is unwittingly aided, spreading its destructive embrace. They all rush out, and Krishnakan sees the house he made with so much love, and decorated with even more excitement, burned down. He looks around, but doesn't find any of his daughters, so he shouts Poonam's name. Hearing her name, Poonam looks up and sees that her room is surrounded by the unforgiving blaze. She tries going out, but doesn't find any escape. Krishnakan arrives and brings her out safely, but the ordeal is far from over. Their beloved Chodi remains trapped inside. Poonam, overflowing with love for her sister, rushes inside. Krishnakant runs after her, but slips on the stairs and falls down. Rama rushes inside and sees Poonam rescuing Chodi, but fate has a cruel twist in store. Just as they near safety, the fiery wrath of the collapsing roof threatens to consume them both. In a selfless act of bravery, Poonam pushes Chodi away to protect her sacrificing herself to the wrath of the flames. Amidst the chaotic scene of devastation, the piercing wails of sirens herald the arrival of the ambulance. Poonam, laid upon the stretcher, is whisked away to the hospital's burn unit, Krishnakant beside her, his soul adrift in a sea of uncertainty. In the distant city of Delhi, oblivious to the tragedy that has befallen his beloved bride, Prem prepares to embark on his journey, dressed in anticipation and hope. Inside the hospital, amidst a sea of tears and heartfelt prayers, Krishnakant, Bhagat, and Chodi cling to each other, their hearts heavy with anxiety for Poonam's well-being. 
The doctor takes Krishnekin aside and tells him that she has suffered profound injuries, with 40% deep burns, including agonizing third-degree burns on half of her body. Despite her untouched face, the severity of the burns renders tomorrow's wedding an impossible dream. In the face of this heartbreak, Krishnekin's eyes well up with tears for his beloved daughter. Bagat advises him to call Harishchandra to share the harrowing truth. The wedding procession is about to leave when Harishchandra gets a call from Bagat bearing the news of the horrific incident. Back at the hospital, Krishnekant goes to see Poonam, and despite her own pain, the first thing she asks is about her beloved sister Chodi's well-being. Rama and Chodi, eavesdropping on this tender exchange, are overcome with emotion, tears streaming down their cheeks in unison. Out of the ICU, Rama cries her heart out. She says that it was her beauty that always pained her eyes. And today she, in the midst of her own agony, selflessly surrendered her own beauty to safeguard her cherished sister. Bagat goes to the doctor and asks if Poonam will be able to recover fully after the surgery. However, the doctor's response remains shrouded in uncertainty, as this delicate case provides no guarantees. The doctor then makes Krishnekin sign a permission paper for the surgery, assuring him that every effort will be made to save his precious daughter. A montage of memories floods Krishnekin's mind, from Poonam's innocent childhood to the radiant bloom of her adulthood. Tears of love and anguish fall like raindrops from his eyes. But when he looks up, to his complete surprise, he sees Prem standing in the corridor. Amidst the tense atmosphere of the hospital corridor, Prem gathers his courage and approaches Krishnekant with a heartfelt plea. He seeks the father's permission to fulfill the commitment they made, to marry Poonam at the appointed time. Krishnekant says that Prem won't be able to see Poonam in such pain, so it's better he leaves. Krishnekant then attempts to leave, but is stopped in his tracks by Harish Chandra who reminds him that Poonam is not merely Krishnekin's daughter, but also their cherished daughter-in-law. He then informs them that Delhi's top surgeons are on their way to Madhupur, and Poonam's well-being is now their responsibility. Prem goes to meet Poonam, but to his dismay, she averts her gaze, unable to face him in her current state. Undeterred, he tenderly presents the vermilion he has brought for her, his bride. But she claims that the pretty girl had the right to that vermilion, not this ugly burnt person. Tears stream down his face, but his love remains unwavering, steadfast in the face of her self-doubt. With a voice trembling with emotion, he declares that his love knows no bounds, that her physical appearance can never diminish the flame of their love. He kneels in front of her, says that she is his companion, his one true love, takes out the vermilion and puts it in her hairline. In a whirlwind of hope and determination, Bhavna and Chodi transform the hospital room into a festive haven, adorning it with love and joy. Sunil, not to be outdone, arranges for an abundance of sweets, a symbol of their unyielding celebration. The doctor says that through all his time at this hospital, he has only seen brides getting burnt for dowry, and it is the first time he has seen a patient getting married. With bated breath, Poonam is wheeled into the operation theater, and her loved ones huddle outside, their hearts entangled in prayers for her recovery. Even Rama, who has long withheld her emotions, finds herself at the temple, fervently praying for her daughter's well-being for the first time in her life. After many tremendous hours, the arduous wait finally comes to an end, and the doctors emerge from the operation theater, bearing the most precious news, that the surgery has been a resounding success. The doctor advises that Poonam will need to remain in the hospital for at least a month, and a half, and then she will be free to go home. Time flies, but Prem never leaves her bedside for even a minute. His love acts as a potent elixir that heals her wounds, both visible and unseen. Sunil helps in rebuilding and renovating Krishnakin's house, and amidst the hum of excitement, wedding preparations once again take flight. Rama goes to the hospital to bring her daughter back home. As she embraces Poonam in a tender embrace, it marks the genesis of a bond long yearned for, a connection forged through the fire of adversity. Once more, the streets come alive with dazzling adornments, heralding the long-awaited moment of love's union. Poonam, adorned in resplendent attire, readies herself for the grand occasion, her heart beating with anticipation. Prem, welcomed by Rama with open arms, stands tall at the forefront, ready to embark on a journey of eternal togetherness. The wedding ceremony begins, uniting them both. With every step, Poonam leaves behind the sanctuary of her childhood home, embraced by the warmth of love and blessings that guide her forward. With tears in his eyes, Krishnakan bids her farewell, and as she gracefully sits in her palanquin, the air is charged with emotions of joy, nostalgia, and hope, all intertwined in the thread of destiny. The movie ends when Poonam hugs Prem, because their wait is finally over, and they are finally won. Love's victory is etched upon their faces, illuminating the screen with a glow that transcends time and space.